Hey guys, welcome back to another RC Glider Basics video. My name is Thomas Lee and today we're going to talk a little bit about failsafe. But before we talk about failsafe itself, we must first understand the background on why we need failsafe and how it can help us save money and make flying RC gliders safer for everyone. Right now, most of us are using a 2.4 GHz radio system to control our RC planes and gliders. 2.4 GHz systems comes in many flavors. It could be FreeSky's ACCST or Access protocols, Spectrum's DSMX, Futaba's Fast, Fastest or FHSS, or any one of the other dozens of protocols available on the market right now from all the various brands. 2.4 GHz systems has made it very easy for everyone to pick up a radio and go fly without having to see you know, if anyone is using the same channel or swapping frequency crystals like in the old FM days. But it's not without its drawbacks. The biggest drawback is that a 2.4 GHz system essentially requires visual line of sight to maintain a strong link between the transmitter and receiver. Anything that comes between the transmitter and receiver can block the connection. So this sucks for competition gliders because our gliders are mostly made from carbon fiber, which shields radio signals. This is why we always recommend using receivers with at least two antennas. So some gliders have different materials in the nose, like fiberglass, which is transparent to signals, and why some pilots run their antennas outside the fuselage. These are all done so that we can minimize the chances of the link between the transmitter and receiver being shielded by carbon or other RF shielding materials in our models. The second drawback is range slash interference. In the ideal situation, many of the current 2.4 GHz protocols can be flown upwards to three kilometers away. However, 2.4 GHz is used by most Wi-Fi systems, although some are using 5 GHz, and it can also be affected by cell towers. So if there are many other pilots flying in the same time, or you're in an industrial area where they may be using high-powered 2.4 GHz controllers for machinery, or you're in a city with a lot of Wi-Fi hotspots, or even if you're just near a cell phone tower, your range will be affected. With the exception of Express LRS and Team Black Sheep's Tracer systems, your range will be usually around one to one and a half kilometers area in real world situations. So depending on the location, it might be even lower than that. The point is 2.4 gigahertz is and can be affected by many things in our environment. And we use them in carbon gliders, which is really tough on radio links. So what happens if we lose the connection between the transmitter and receiver? If you didn't set up a failsafe, it'll just keep the last command it received. And unless the connection recovers quickly, it'll lead to the model flying away or crashing. And that's why we need a failsafe. Before we continue, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to give it a like. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, hit the subscribe button and notification bell icon so you don't miss our future videos. So what exactly is a failsafe and what does it do? Well, on a DLG, since we don't have a motor, the failsafe setting is the combination of control surface deflections that puts the glider in a predetermined flight pattern if or when signal is lost. There are three main purposes of a failsafe. So one, it reduces the chances of your model flying away. For an example, it might be flying straight away from you when it loses signal, and if there's no failsafe, it will continue flying in that heading. Similarly, if it's in lift and it loses signal, it'll likely keep in the turn and continue to climb and quite possibly just fly away. And number two, it reduces the chance of your model crashing at high speed. So let's say your model lost signal when you're diving back from a thermal, or even if your model is flying level, but it's trimmed to be very neutral. There's a good chance if left untouched, it will come crashing down with speed. And number three, it can help you detect installation issues that might be missed during your regular range checks. This isn't as important for radio systems that tell you if you have dropped signals, for example, with FreeSky, It'll alert you if your signal strength is getting weaker or if the signal is lost. Same as Spectrum, it'll let you know if there was a hold. But surprisingly, in July 2021, there are still radio systems out there that don't have this basic functions. For these systems, having a failsafe setup really helps you detect momentary signal loss that would have gone unnoticed before you hit prolonged signal loss. By the way, we have the brand new FreeSky X20 and X20S radios in stock in our US store. These new radios ship free in the US and we also have a number of FreeSky receivers commonly used in gliders in stock. So now you can buy receivers, servos and other glider goodies all from a single store. It's armsorusa.com and I've also linked it in the description box below. Okay Thomas, so I want to set up a failsafe for my glider. How do I do it? 
Well, each glider does so differently, so you'll need to refer to the manual to see exactly how it's implemented in your radio. But even though the path to get there might be a little bit different between the different systems, the end goal is pretty much the same. So I'm gonna give you three different examples of popular fail-safe setups and what they try to achieve. So the first one is something I use for most of my models. And for the record, if you do this and you lose signal while in lift, there's a decent chance that the model might fly away. But the reason I set it up this way is so if I do enter failsafe during a contest, I still have a chance to recover and complete my flight or get my model back into the box. So there's definitely a risk reward factor at play. Essentially, I drop my camera to around 10 millimeters with around 30% left rudder, a bit of right aileron and a little bit of up elevator. This puts the model into a slow left turn. If it's not in lift, I will have time to run toward the model and try to reestablish link. However, as I said, if the model is in lift, it might fly away, so you have to run fast. And if there is wind, the plane is going to drift. Maybe drift a lot if it is very windy. A more popular way is to have the model deploy full flaps with full left or right rudder and allow the model to slowly spiral to the ground. This is the safest setting for the model because the model loses lift and is basically in a controlled fall. So this reduces the amount of time it is in the air, which minimizes the drift, while it descends slow enough to minimize damage. And the third way isn't used as often, but it's worth considering if your flying site is near busy roads, highways, or anywhere where a runaway model may cause a traffic accident. So it's similar to the second method, but instead of having full flaps, you only have half flaps with full rudder. So this puts the model in a faster and steeper spiral to the ground, and it really minimizes drift but it does have the most potential for damage to the model because it might be coming in a little hotter than you know, our second method. But sometimes that might be what's needed if your flying site is nearby traffic. So obviously these are just some examples of fail-safe setups that I've tried or have seen others use in the past, and there are many ways to set it up. Do you set yours up a different way? Let us know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful, please remember to hit like and subscribe. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see you in the next video.